As we near the conclusion of our exploration of configuring servers, we have another task here titled Add and Remove Features in Offline Images. Now, this is yet another use of the DISM command that uh, we've been talking about thus far. And arguably, this is one of the somewhat unfair additions here to the content for the 70-410 exam, in part because most often, you'll be actually using this DISM command to add and remove features from offline images anytime you're deploying those images, typically through a Windows Deployment Services implementation. Now, we won't get into Windows Deployment Services here in the 410. That's a topic for the 411. But since it's a part of the curriculum, I think it's important for us to take a look at the different commands that can be used for actually adding and removing those features when it comes time to get your Windows Deployment Services machine up and running. Let's explore DISM just a bit further. And if you recall back in that last clip, we've already gone through the process of mounting up that offline image on our file server, on the X drive, on file one in that share IT. We've mounted it here to this location, C colon backslash mount. And if I go to uh, so if I go to the root of C and then go to the mount location, we'll see again, this is the content that currently exists inside of that WIM container. Now, I mentioned that DISM includes a whole series of switches that you can use for performing various slicing and dicing of these WIM containers. And I want to show you a couple more that you can use in order to adjust some of the configurations for a machine that is deployed from this offline image. The first of which is a really cool command here called DISM. Uh, and then the image, I have to reference the image at C colon mount. The uh, switch here is get features, which will essentially list the entire long series of possible roles, role services, and features, essentially packages built into the WIM that could potentially be enabled on a system that is deployed from this offline image. Now, again, there's some other information that you don't know yet because we haven't gotten into Windows Deployment Services and how these images get deployed. But for now, just recognize that for those that are set to enable, these are the types of things that will be made available on a Windows instance that is deployed from this image. And so this stands to reason that for certain circumstances, you may wish to have images that will automatically deploy these different packages as part of the Windows installation itself. The way in which you can accomplish that is by enabling these specific features on that offline image so that when it comes time to deploy, they're, then they're available. We got a couple of different commands we want to take a look at first. The first of which is get feature info. And then the feature name we're looking for here is any of these features that exist here in this very long list of them. And the one I'm probably going to look for is one we'll be dealing with a little bit later. That's our DHCP server. And I believe that's up in the list somewhere here. There it is, their DHCP server, which as you can see is currently set to disabled. Let's go ahead and enable the feature, the DHCP server feature on this offline image. I'll choose feature name DHCP server first just to take a look at the feature info, the, just the characteristics of this feature. As you can see, I have a dis display name, um, an ID, some configuration status, some version information here, and other items. But the state is currently set to disabled. In order to enable the feature, we need to use another command here, which instead of getting the feature info, will instead be the switch enable, enable feature. If I run this, as you'll see, it goes about actually enabling the feature there inside of the image. Now we have one final command here that actually commits all the changes that we've made to disk. Because recall, we're just dealing at this point with a set of pointers to the actual content on that remote file server. So I have one final command here that is dism unmount, uh, unmount image and then slash commit. Now, I'm not going to run this command because running this command is going to give me a little error message because we originally mounted this image in read-only mode. So all these changes that I've attempted to make are not actually going to function because I, they have no ability to be written back to disk. But again, just recognize that this is the final command here because you have to commit these changes for them then to be permanent and part of the WIM container that we're dealing with here.